All right, welcome back to the class. Um, here we are on week eight. I'm gonna do a little bit of an overview of things in the Canvas module. If you haven't had a chance to look at that yet, we'll look at it together. But this is week eight, final polish and final project, because next week is the final week of class. Uh, I know it feels like it can't be there already, but it is. If we take a look at the, quick look at the syllabus, the um, the semester in the summer is uh, about to end. So it's a nine week summer. We're on week eight. That means the semester is about to end. Uh, it feels like it just started and there's plenty more to do, but time limits. So next week is the final week. Technically, this class ends on, let's see, um, officially the class, officially the class ends on um, August 1st, technically. So August 1st is a Thursday, next week, Thursday. Well, the problem there, of course, is that that's not a complete week because we're always used to doing a class on Monday and Wednesday, and then the homework is due on the following Tuesday. Well, next week is the final week of the class, and Thursday is officially the final day. We're going to have the Monday and the Wednesday as normal uh, class time. But be aware that the final project is going to be due on Sunday, the 4th, not the Tuesday like we were always used to. So this will be one change. Um, and most people, if you've made it all the way to the end of the course, well, you, you've been hearing these things already. This should not be a surprise. So we have this one final week today, which will probably be pretty short. Uh, final polish on the game, then lab time for you to work. Wednesday, complete day for you to work. You can come to class if you want or not. I would recommend you do so that you can do the work, use our computers, ask for help. The Monday after that, the 29th, same thing. You can come to the room or not, uh, get some help. To be honest, if you come to the class just on Zoom, that's harder to get your help. You can do that, I guess. And then Wednesday, the 31st, the last day of the month, um, another day of open lab, because then the final project will be due on Sunday, the 4th. Today, I'm going to reveal the final project. Um, went at a good rate in the class, so actually the syllabus is a little out of date. Uh, we were going to cover sound and stuff this week, but we already did it a few weeks ago, so we're really on track. So it's going to be more about work time. And next week is the final week. Well, before next week, the stuff for this week. Eight. This is our last regular week where we will be finishing the project. And then reminding you of the various days of next week. The end of the class is here, but you're going to have lots of time to work and catch up if you feel you're not on track this week. And especially next week is going to be all up to you work time to catch up on anything, to do any late work, and of course to work on the final project. This week then we need to talk about uh, our various project settings for final publication which also include icons um, for the app and setting up the right version and such. And then the final developer account, um, talk about that. As a reminder then, come to Open Lab if you need it. And remember we from 2.30 to 3 on Mondays and Wednesdays. Actually, that reminds me, I will also tell you, uh, I'm teaching another class on Tuesdays, also in this room, also 12 to uh, 
to 2.30. And in there, I put lab time as well. So if you really need it, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week and next week, we will have lab time. Now, on Tuesday, it's from 2.30 to 3. So please do not come and interrupt the class that is happening before lab time on Tuesday. But if you need one extra day of lab time Tuesday, this week and next week, 2.30 to 3, just like Mondays and Wednesdays, officially lab time is 2.30 to 3. A little bit of extra time there. Uh, the week seven assignment is due tomorrow. So you're probably working on that. Last week's homework, you're working on that uh, to finish it for tomorrow. And then in two weeks or a week and a half or so uh, is due the final project, which I'll reveal right here. Final project. It's final project is not a surprise. It's basically you're going to finish what we started in the lectures. There's a culmination of all the required concepts we've learned. You're going to take everything from the weekly lectures and then compile it to your final project. And if you've been following along with the first code check-in and the second code check-in, you're very, very close to the final project as well. Make sure you check all the requirements so you can get graded on the requirements and ask for help. Note, since the class officially ends on August 1st, Thursday, the deadline will be on Sunday, not Tuesday. Uh, I'm already giving an extension on the assignment. It should be due on Thursday, final day of class, but I'm going to have it be due on that Sunday, and that's already too far extended because then I have to download your work go through it frame by frame, grade it, and then turn in final grades. I have my own deadline as well. I need to turn in homeworks, uh, homework grades to the college in a reasonable time before the next semester. And therefore, I cannot give the deadline all the way until that Tuesday, the 6th. It should be on the Thursday, but we'll put it on a Sunday. So it's noted there. I'm telling you in person. I'm recording this, etc. So this is due on Sunday, not the usual Tuesday. To create a project folder, copy your previous work into that project folder, rename it as usual, and then add these items. At least one more game screen than what we demonstrated in class. In class together, we made the title screen, the help screen, the first gate, the front door, the main hallway, a left path, a right path, bad ending, good ending. We did, a, we did that all together. You need to create at least one more main game screen for a player to play through. So one more gameplay screen. And then add any type of interaction that we previously learned. A simple click to move to the next screen. Or a pick up a thing to open a door. Or time limit of something happening random stuff on screen, mini boss, time limit, secret stuff hidden behind the bookshelf, whatever. All of the various ways we've learned of interactivity, you're going to need one more screen. Depending on your time, you're probably going to add three more or more. Because again, at the moment, when someone plays this game for the first time, it's very short. But we spent eight weeks making this very short project out of hundreds of lines of code and that should show you that the big AAA titles that you play with millions of lines of code have a lot more time and effort and resources put into it. Here, you are, your, are the complete game design studio. You're the graphics person, the code person, the tester person, etc. Well, to show me that you've understood creating scenes, creating code to move to that new scene, and creating some kind of game scene, you will add at least one more. You can add more if you want, but at least one more game scene. If you only add the ones that we did in class, you will not get good credit on that. We did that together. That's nothing special. I walked you, I held your hand through that. Now you need to show me one more game screen, however you want. Next up, at least two examples of game music. So we learned together how to set up this game music, 
actually make a little, I'm gonna make a little change here to also show that you know what you're doing. Little change where I'm going to say, uh, do not use any of the example music we used. This, is, this will add the one more step outside the box. Let's say here, do not use any of the music files we used in class. Uh, so the ones I used, that is, those, you know, that happy one at the beginning, which makes no sense. And then there was that one scary one, and then one game ending screen. Those that I specifically used, do not use those for your project. Yes, you may think one of them is perfect for your project. Yeah, but I need to see that you know what you're doing. So you need to get some other different sound, at least two. Notice again, very lenient here. Probably something for the title and probably something for the main game screen, at least. If you then also want to add separate music for the good ending, bad ending, great. If you want to add separate music for the help screen, great. If you want to add a completely different music for that new scene you're going to create, great. But at least two different background musics, two different, did I make that obvious? At least two examples of game music. I guess to be very obvious, we will say at least two different examples. You know, someone cutting corners will say, yeah, I made the code for playing the music. It's the same music throughout the whole game. We'll say, so at least two different sound files so that I can see your that you know the process of finding the sound from the YouTube uh, sound library, uh, importing it into the animate project, adding linkage to that sound, and then writing the code to play the background sound. Then after that, at least one example of a sound effect when you interact. For example, if you break a window, why not have it have the sound of glass breaking? Even though this exact concept was not covered in class, it's very similar to adding background music. So this is one where you're going to show me that you're going to step outside the box. I'm not going to go step by step holding your hand. Here is how to make the sound of glass play, glass breaking when you break the window. It's 99% the same as playing the background music. It's just that when you break the break the glass, at the moment you break the glass is when it plays the music or the sound effect of breaking glass. So at least one example of that, you can add more than that. Starting point for that is, again, remind yourself, how did I add background music? Okay, I imported a sound, I gave it linkage, then I wrote the code to play the sound at the right point. Also do it by putting the sound directly onto a frame. Actually, let me put that as a hint right there. You can make that sound play via code, or you can um, sound play via code, or you can make it play off of the timeline. Remember, we did that as well back on part one. Either of those will be acceptable. Add this sound effect. learned in CIS 126, or you can add the sound effect directly to the timeline, CIS 125, last class. Exceed there, you got plenty to do. So if you want to avoid that one more extra code aspect, you can do it via the uh, adding it directly to the timeline like we've previously learned. Today, we're going to look at adding the uh, app icon. So at least one example of one of the app icons. I think there's like four possibilities. You can do at least one. That'll be good enough. You're going to add the PNG file to your folder and to the setting screen. I'll show that today. And it goes without saying, number eight, this should all be you. It should be your character, your backgrounds, your plot, etc. I don't want you to turn in a haunted house with a wizard going through it like mine is. Now, you might have something similar, but it's still going to be your drawings, your original character, your original background, your plot, your screens, etc., your animation, etc.,
worst case scenario, if you feel that this is the hardest thing you've ever done and you're running out of time and stressing, worst case scenario is you could take my project from the final piece of code that I did and then take that, save as, and then start to change it. It's not going to be perfect. You still have to do the other parts, um, but you, you, you then need to change it to be your project. And if you do start with my project, I will be looking that you change everything. If you leave that door animation, like how I animated it frame by frame, I'm going to see that. And if I see all those spikes look exactly like how I animated them, I'm going to see that. And all of those things are going to add up to uh, be a detriment to this part of the assignment. 99% of you are creating your project with your ideas and your graphics and such. Keep going. You're on track. But a couple of you that are falling behind, you could start with my project, make sure you completely update it to your idea in addition to everything else. Save your project, zip the folder, upload it. Extra credits, as I've said previously. If you add the inventory system so that a pop-up appears, so that it shows you've collected the item or not, that's extra credit. If you add the character select screen, that there's two, at least two or more characters to select from before you go to the next screen, before you start the game, that's extra credit. Each one of these is two and a half points, up to two and a half points in total, up to five points. That's a big chunk of an assignment that is um, of this assignment. It's 20% if you do the extra credit only and skip one of these items. You definitely don't want to do one of these items and you do the extra credit perfectly, you can make up those points that you miss with the extra credit. If you do all the other items well, and then you do the extra credit, you'll get even more points. Those are the extra credits. The others are the requirements. Meeting. Deadline is Sunday in two weeks. Not quite two weeks, but Sunday in two weeks. So you're going to have, after today's short lecture, then you're going to have lab time today and Tuesday, 2.30 to 3, and Wednesday, 12 to 3, and next Monday, 12 to 3, and Tuesday, 2.30 to 3, and the final Wednesday, 12 to 3. So lots of time for you to work as well as at home. So there should be no excuse why you don't get a perfect grade on this. You have plenty of time to do it. If you slack off, you're really going to suffer. This, as you've been seeing, is not something to complete in a couple of hours. It takes many hours for the code to work properly and especially the graphics and such. You will have plenty of time to work on it. Need help, of course, contact me, the assistants, come to class, ask for help. Lastly, on this module, just reminding you, wrap up here. I'm going to cover in the lecture right now the air settings, the icons, device release, developer account. And then next week is the final week. All open lab time. Turn it in by the end of the week. Questions on that, put them in the chat. I'm going to move on to the main final lecture here and then um, time for work. So I have my project running in Animate. And again, the uh, the totality of the gameplay is uh, relatively short, but then the um, the way that it all works is um, very complex, as we've been seeing. And I'm running my project, and I have an error. So, what is that error? Is that an error? wasn't an error. Okay. But anyway, the totality of the project, the game's very short, of course, but we spent weeks on it getting it to work. Here's a here's a sort of a, a dangling thread that I hope that you fix. When you go to the help screen, there's an exit button that we never got to work, that I never showed you how to get it to work, but that you should be able to get to work. Maybe someone reads the help file here, and then they're like, actually, I don't want to play at the moment. Exit. 
If you have that, I'm gonna help. Make it work, of course. As I check your your final grades, I'm gonna, I mean, your final project, I'm gonna actually play it and check every screen. And if I see, oh, that's not working. Okay, it shows that you're not paying attention. You're not testing your own game. You're not putting the final polish. Back, we uh, start the game. If you do the extra credit, pick a character. Great. This is extra credit. Um, notice in the assignment, I didn't say anything about a cut screen. Cut scene, I mean. It's up to you. Add it or not. It doesn't have to have your character. It could just have a text full of, a screen full of text, explanation, whatever. I didn't say anything about the cutscene in the in the homework, so it's up to you to add it or not. Actually, the game starts, and we've got the basic interaction. Got the dead end interactions, remember these. We've got the hit detection interaction. The completely extra inventory system. And if you do go off and get the extra stuff, extra credit, on the left and the right, we've got two ways to game over. We've got the boss over here, hit points, fun little animation. It'd be fun to have the, the sound effect of the um, of the wood falling off. Again, you can add it via code or you can add it on the timeline. When the panels break, play the sound. If I did the if I did get the key, we can go to that extra path. This might be one of the ways you add that extra screen as required, because at the moment it doesn't do anything except that the code is ready for it to do something on your own imagination. And then we have boss where we can exit or restart. Instead, if I get a bad ending, well, I, I get the bad ending. Is it a restart? So, um, again, then they confirm or not. So all of that that we did together. All of that that we did together. Um, All that we did together was the starting point of it all, and you should be able to expand upon it. I've given you a lot of ingredients. That's up to you to combine the ingredients. And remember also maybe on the uh, notes and so forth, you're also updating that. Everything works. Well, let's say we're at the end of it all say we spent all of this time, we've got 20 levels, we're ready to start to think about, well, what's the next step? It's not just that this game, I'm going to play it on my own computer. I want other people to play it. And ultimately, the idea is that this is a game for Android or iPhone devices. So let's talk about, put this in a separate notepad file, just because isn't anything we really do. Notes in the project, I'll put them in their own separate note file. I'll upload these to Canvas. Reference. So we'll say project is complete. Now we polish, distribute it. Remember, we have this game project. Well, what do we do with it? We need to output it, publish it in a way so that other people can actually play it. We can play it because we have Adobe Animate, which costs the Adobe subscription. Obviously, we are not expecting people to get Adobe Animate to play our game. And that doesn't even make sense when it runs on a real device. So what are the next steps? We saw this a while ago, and we'll return back to it. File, Air, Settings. In the air settings, go to the file menu, air settings, 
you have all of these panels. We looked at a while ago, I'll start from language. So again, you need at least one of these languages set. Did that a while ago, you probably don't need to do anything different there. Languages set at least one. Permissions set at least one. This is part of the um, wrapping up the project and one of these screens is gonna be the required one for the assignment. We'll get to that one. Permission set at least one. Internet, probably. Icons. So this is the one that I'm saying here. We skipped this one a while ago when I first looked at it. But now you need at least one of these for the final project in any one of these sizes. And I'll do a whole main lecture on this in a moment. But you have uh, six possible ones. Icons. Set at least one for the homework. Set them all when the project is published. Uh, that is when, when we want to publish it to the world so that everyone could play it. You want all of them set. And then for the homework, I would recommend the 192 size. So I'll go into details on that, how to set this all up in a moment. To be added, I'll get back to that one moment. Deployment. Well, we've been running this on the simulator pretty much, but when you ever want to run it on your real device, we did this a while ago. Um, deployment. Create or load your P12 file, the certificate. Say I lost mine a while ago, so I can easily create one here. Remember this, you would set all of this up. So whatever my name, the name of my fake company, whatever, you know, Compost Apps, my organizational unit or job title, I don't know, the CEO, I'm the head programmer, whatever. Um Oh, publish your name, organization name. Uh, sorry, that was your name right there. And then the name of your company, country, password. Saving that as a P12 file. So you probably, you, you can use the one you created several weeks ago. You can create a new one, that's fine. I'm gonna use this credential with this project, with my password so that it remembers me. And if I had my Android plugged in, I would tell it to install it, launch it on the device. Well, for the final assignment, create your P12 file, set deployment type, device release, which is there by default, probably. I'm done with the project. I'm not testing it anymore. I'm not debugging it anymore. I'm creating this final file that is the actual project to be distributed to the world. Where I would click publish in a moment. Seen this screen before a while ago. And then lastly on your general. I'll put file. Could be anything, app name, could be the real name of your app, the, I, the, the text that appears um, below your icon. So when it's on a real device, there's a text below the icon um, you know, House of Amazing Wonders, whatever. I could write a huge name, but be careful, of course, when you look at the icons on your device, some of them that have a big name. Well, the problem there is the name is going to get cut off. So if you're able to set this up with a one word or initials or something, that's good. That's why the uh, project actually um, can be readable. I'll put file, like I said, it could be anything, but I might as well put the date of the current project, or it could be, you know, 
house, the name of the project, haunted house. App ID, same thing. They should all match. ID, same as output file or app name. Version number, version label, whatever you want. Aspect ratio, probably landscape. We've designed our project to be sideways. If you don't change that to landscape, your project will be shrunk really small in a weird way. It's up to you, full, full screen or orientation. If you turn on audio orientation when the person changes the uh, the orientation of their phone, the, your app should change. But since we never really thought about designing it, but how would it look like vertically? Um, it might not look how you want. And if you want to take over every inch, every millimeter of the of the phone screen so that it doesn't show the battery level or your Wi-Fi level and all that stuff, you can tell it full screen if you want. Ones, don't worry about that. Click OK, I would save. I'll come back to the idea that I had about, okay, I need icons. This can be done in any app. If you're more comfortable drawing actual, making actual drawings and such in Photoshop or Microsoft Paint or whatever other graphics, you can do it there if you want. But I'm already in Animate. So let's say if I want to complete the part about icons, right? We have icons for this project. We have six to choose from. And I said for the assignment, at least one of these. And I would recommend the large one, the 192. This is saying, okay, load a PNG file of your app's icon. I don't have one handy. We're going to take a moment to create one. So file new. It's going to be a, a uh, plain old character animation type of document with the dimensions, 192. Frame rate doesn't matter, but might as well use what we always used. We're not going to have any code in this, but might as well leave it as we've always used. But the point of this is I'm creating a brand new separate file where my icon, where I can draw my icon of um, my, my app, my game, that, save it into my project folder, say app icon. And I've got the size of my, of my uh, apps icon where I can do anything I want with uh, making some kind of icon. take as much time as I need. Perfect. Say good enough for the moment. The final project's due in two weeks, so I'll make it perfect later. Well, I need to export this. We, we haven't done this in a while. I have to, we have to export it as a PNG file so that I could then put it into my project file here as an icon. So file, export, export image. Say over here, the continuation of this is happening over here. Icon creation, new file as 192 by 192 pixels, 24 FPS, AS3, whatever. Design your icon as you wish. And then file menu, export, and then export image. To get to this export image screen, your preset over here, PNG 24. Preset. 
PNG 24. Now here is where you need to make some decisions. The default behavior of ping 24 is, is uh, transparency. Your icon will be transparent. Only the lines that you drew or the colors that you colored will be visible. So in my case, I didn't finish coloring everything. Was that on purpose? Was that a mistake? I don't know. But the point is whatever is not colored when I do the export will be transparent, which I may want. Right? If I go here, I do want that outside part maybe transparent, but then my inner drawings, I want it colored. If I don't want transparency, that's another way you can do this. Everything will be automatically white or a color that you choose. This is up to you to decide how you want this. I would recommend leave transparency, but make sure you color what needs to be colored. So item here under deployment, you suggest turning on auto rotate. This can allow to do this. Uh, yes, uh, doing the auto rotate can be very helpful. Uh, but it's even better when we actually design the project to look nice horizontal or vertical. So you might test it actually. You might turn that check mark on, and then if you do deploy it to your device, you can check it, see if it looks good. If it doesn't, you'll have to redesign your app a little bit so that it looks nice vertically, or just lock it down landscape, and see what happens. Good point there. Also, save and do backups and back up your work not just on your flash drive or whatever, but elsewhere, Google Drive or Dropbox or a separate computer or whatever. Anyway, here, preset 24, set transparency or not as you wish. Right here, there'll be your sizes, 192. The other sizes like the 32 pixel, here's the place where I can also from this one icon, the large size, I can make the other sizes. When I'm about to export, I could change these to be the sizes that I want from the starting point. Get back to that in a moment. But let's say these are the, uh, this is this is the icon that I want. I would click, I can't see it because my screen's too small, but down there at the bottom, I think it says publish, or maybe okay or whatever it says. So I think I can press it, yeah. And then, so you're about to save a PNG file. Save it in the same project folder. Assignment says you're going to save your PNG file, probably also your FLA file, in the project folder. That's why you're zipping the whole folder. You're also going to save your icon graphic in the folder. Call that whatever you want. And then you have to add it to your project. Back to the file air settings. Icons panel. Icon 192. Those for the icon I just made, which is in my folder. Now that icon. When I publish this is going to be added to my project, gets published as the final end result by connect my device and publish to the device. I can see there in all my settings, the icon, you know, it's on my, it's, it would be on my device, just like any other icon for any other app plus the text, that's what's being set up on this screen. And so this final step here, similar when we do the debug, that it takes a moment, especially when we add more sound. Code-wise, even if we might have 500 lines of code, that does not take very long to publish. It's when we start to add lots of graphics lots of uh, sound, that's when it takes longer to um, publish. 
And now this is okay. Your APK was packaged successfully, but there's a warning. Application has been packaged with a cap to runtime. There's no problem here at all. Just okay. And in my project folder, and working with these FLA files all this time, we have this P12 file, which is our certificate showing that we created the project. We may have an SWF file floating around every time we do the debug. We have this XML file, which is holding the settings that we see whenever we're inside of this Android settings panel. They're all stored here. Here's the icon file that I made with the layers and all of that. Here's the final graphic. And then my actual file is right there, whatever .apk in my case, because I told it when I publish, call it this, that's the file, 32 megabytes. And pretty much all of that is from the uh, uh, sound. Um, you know, we put sounds in there that are maybe five minutes long, but if you put sounds in there that are only one minute long, that'll be more efficient. I'm gonna loop. That's my file, because after publishing, you get an XYZ file dot APK file you can distribute. Distribute is send to people via email. upload it to your website or add it to an app store. The actual app stores out there where you get actual apps and games. So this first one is straightforward, create a new email, attach the, the file. However, this is a huge file and most emails have a limit. Uh, Angie, what's usually the limit on emails, like two megabytes for an attachment? Oh, okay. Yeah, so it depends on the service. Some of them, like Google, might be up to 20 or so. Um, some of them might be as minimal, like two megabytes. Yeah, that's a good point. So we'll say it also here. Uh, first, upload to Google Drive or OneDrive or um, Dropbox, whatever. Send the link. You know, don't attach it directly to the email. Some providers won't let you make a big attachment. Okay, upload it to one of your cloud storage locations, which will then give you a link. Send the link. Therefore, you're not attaching it directly to the email and the email provider won't complain. Then the person now has a link to your app. It's then up to them to then click the link to download and add your app. Well, if you've got a website, if you've taken some of our other classes like CIS 123, you learned how to make a website there. So make a page on your website, download my app, you know, victorapps.com, and then upload your file there and then have a clickable link and then they can download. These are ways to do it, of course, but the most common way is I go to the app store. I go to the Apple app store or my Android app store. I do a search and I find the app and I install it that way. Everyone's used to that way. So this is the recommended way. That takes us to the final topic of this lecture for today, which is set up a developer account, mass distribution. This is small distribution, a few people at a time and such. People have to find your website first, but here is mass distribution where you can reach all over the world. People can find your app all over the world. So you have uh, app store, of course, the Google, what's the current one called? Is it still called Google Marketplace? I doubt it. What's the current one called? Google Apps, Google App Store, Google Play Apps. That's the current name of it. Years ago, it was, it was Google Marketplace, I think. Google Play App Store. 
That's one option. We also have the Apple App Store, which I guess is just called Apple App Store. Store. Gone. Amazon has its own App Store. on App Store. So on any of these, I can create the account and then upload my app there. Um, but Google Play App Store uh, price. You are actually, as a developer, you have a to create an account on the Play Store. One time $25 registration fee. So obviously for the class, you're not going to be required to do any of this. I'm just giving you the information that the next step would be, I wanna upload my app to the Google Play Store so that everyone in the world can get my amazing game. Well, first step is that it costs $25 one-time fee to set up. Then there's a 30% revenue sharing. So. If you sell your app for 99 cents, let's say $1, 30% of $1, 30 cents, Google will take 30 cents out of your $1 sale. Okay, I'm gonna sell my app for $10. It'll we'll take $3 off of that. I think that's the math. So this app store costs money to create an account and then they'll take some money whenever you sell your app. Okay, Apple is similar, $99, a little bit more expensive, a lot more expensive, but that's part of doing business on these app stores. And then they will also take 30%. If you make more than a million dollars, then you get a different ratings and such. Um, oh, and then also, um, this is a yearly subscription. So $99 per year. Well, is one time pay $25. I create my account. I publish my amazing apps. They take 30%. Apple, I create my account $99 per year. Every time I want to be a developer or as long as I want to be a developer, $99 per year. Sell my apps, they take 30%. Okay, that's a lot of investment. But if you've got an amazing app, an amazing game, you'll make up for it eventually. The third option is the Amazon App Store free registration. So no $25 or $99 free but they do the same thing that the other two do, which is they take 30% of the sales of your apps. Now, obviously, if you're giving your app away for free, they're gonna take 30% of zero, but all of these have the 30% um, of the sale of your app. So what's cool about the uh, Amazon one is that you don't have to pay anything up front to create the account. All of them have the same sort of link, developer.android.com versus developer.apple.com versus developer.amazon.com. All of them have a similar sort of portal and they all have some sort of process. Sign up to be a developer. It's a bunch of questions, your name and your email address. If you're going to make money off of your apps, you have to put in a bank account or debit card or whatever. 
if it's one of the paid ones here, you have to then pay for it, credit card, debit card, whatever. So oftentimes people start off, if you're a beginner, if you're a struggling app developer, you start off with the Amazon one. As it's free to set up, you learn how to set it up. You learn the various screens and the setup and everything. And then, okay, cool. Then I'll also publish it on the App Store, the Google Play Store when I save up a little bit for that. And then I'm a real developer. So purpose, you publish your app to the world. So obviously this, this class assignment, you know how vicious people are online, especially when you can be anonymous. If you were to upload your version of your project right now, people are going to give you one star, like, oh, two levels, and then I'm dead, one star. So think about the games that you've played, how detailed and deep they are with gameplay. And for a class project, you're going to get an A, probably. But for publishing this to the real world, you're going to get one star. And especially you know, negative one star if you're charging 99 cents for two levels, right? So this final part of what I wanted to talk about is that you've created this project throughout the semester. We've created it together. For the final project, you have to add one more. Um, you have to add one more game screen somewhere to do something. And even when that's done, you know, you don't have a huge game. Uh, you have something that you can be proud of that you made with your graphics, your sound, your plot, your idea. And thinking back when this semester started, you had in your experience a lot of how do I use the app and drawing and animating. And now in part two, it's the big focus on the code. How do I make it do something? Is it looking pretty? You know, almost all of you have a great ability for art, but then you struggled on the code. That's how it is because the code is way more complex than a drawing. So these hundreds of lines of code add up to make a project, which still feels that a lot more could be added to it. And yes, but it might be a lifelong project. It might take several weeks after the end of the class. You have your goals for this class, but when you one day want to publish this to the world, you need that polish. And I'd be happy to help in the future at some point, if you ever reach out to me in the future and you're getting closer and closer to publishing your app, yeah, reach out to me. Uh, my email is in the syllabus, but I'll put it here too. So for the future, to really finish your game, reach out for some help, advice, tips, whatever. And do so right there's my email. To remind yourself, what's the final step? What do you think about this? Does this make sense? How do my graphics look? Whatever. Um, I'd be happy to do that in the future. So um, this is what I want to talk to talk about today. Uh, if the game were at the final stages, well, time to then publish it and put it out to the world. The game is not at the final stages. We have these final two weeks for you to get it to the final stages. Um, segue into some work time and such. If you have any questions, put them in the chat. Help here in person, ask us. But this will be the final official lecture of this class, AIS 126. Next Wednesday, Monday, and Wednesday, it'll be all lab time just for you to work, ask for help. And then ultimately, it's all due. See so here, don't forget. Project due on Sunday, August 4th, usual 11.55 p.m. And then we'll be done with the summer semester. And I think it zoomed by pretty fast, but uh, time flies when you're having fun coding.